This is day 33 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the GCSE exams, from Monday to Saturday each day, I'm posting a new video with a six mark question so that you can practice answering these extended response type questions. You can find a link in the description below to each week's questions and also the playlist containing all of the previous 32 videos. Before you dive into writing an answer to this physics method question, a couple of quick reminders. Firstly, although you're probably going to be given a full sheet of A4 to answer this, this is not an essay question. There aren't any separate marks for your spelling or grammar or for writing in full sentences. So you can save yourself some time and also make your examiner's life easier by writing in bullet points or particularly for a method in the form of a numbered list. You do need to lay out your answer in a logical order and particularly for a method that means giving us instructions in an order that will allow us to actually get the data that we need to answer the question. So you may want to consider drafting a short plan. I'm not talking about taking up half a page, but just writing down some quick ideas or annotating the question to make sure that you've actually covered all of the aspects that are here. It's also really important that you make sure you answer the full question, particularly for one like this, where you've been given a rubric that tells you that there are three things you need to include in your answer. Tick them off as you include them to make sure that you have covered the full scope of the question. Now, if you haven't done so already, pause the video and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. The first thing that I would notice in reading through this question is that although this looks very similar to one of the GCSE physics required practicals, it's actually not the exact same investigation because rather than investigating the impact of potential difference on current and drawing an IV graph, I'm being asked to look at the impact on resistance. Now that's important because a lot of candidates are going to have memorized methods for the required practicals. And then if a slightly different practical comes up, they just end up writing down the exact method that they've already come up with and not noticing that it's slightly different. So this happens all the time when AQA asks you about a slightly different question, like maybe asking you about the impact of different colors of light on photosynthesis rather than light intensity. So just really be aware of that. Now, as I've said, for a method, it's a really good idea to write your method in terms of a numbered list. And that's also going to help you out if you have a little panic in the exam and you miss something out and you want to slot it in. You can just change your numbering and it makes it really obvious to the examiner that actually they need to read the extra line that you've put at the bottom. And it just kind of removes a bit of anxiety there. So the first thing that I will be doing in this method is building my circuit. So I'm going to start out and I'm going to build a series circuit containing some kind of power source. So that could be a power pack. It could be a battery. You might have set a cell and then the filament lamp that I'm trying to test out and also the ammeter, which is there to measure current. And that needs to be connected in series. So I would explicitly use the word series. Or if the question doesn't say that I can't draw diagrams, then I would probably draw a circuit diagram and go do it like this. Then I need my voltmeter, which is there to measure the potential difference. And I'm going to attach this across the bulb, or if you're not used to using that terminology, I might just say attach it in parallel on either side of the filament lamp. Or again, I might just draw a diagram and show it. Now I need to connect my circuit, and I'm not going to do that straight away because as the circuit is working, it's likely to get warmer and that increase in temperature is going to affect the resistance. So I just want to be connecting it for short periods of time. And then while it's connected, I'm going to measure the potential difference using the voltmeter and I'm going to measure the current using the ammeter. And I want to explicitly say what I'm using each of those pieces of equipment to measure. And I want to make sure that I'm using the proper names for those different quantities. So it's not OK to just say I'm going to measure the amps with the ammeter. You need to use the word current. Then I'm going to calculate resistance, and this is where it's slightly different to the required practical, because in the required practical, I would measure potential difference and I would measure current and I would plot them on a graph. But here in the question, they've explicitly asked me to talk about resistance. So I need to select the appropriate formula and I also need to rearrange it to make resistance the subject. Then the fifth part of my method is that I'm going to increase the potential difference because, of course, I have to change my independent variable. And then I'm going to repeat the previous steps. And this is where it also really helps me to have a numbered list because I can just say steps one to four rather than everything up to this point. And then I'm going to measure it again. At this point, it would be really tempting to feel like I'd answered the question in full and I could move on and tackle the rest of the paper. But of course, I'm not actually done yet because the question also asks me to explain the results that the student would generate, 
which is a little bit mean because they haven't told me what results the student would generate. But of course I know, so the next thing I'm going to do is tell them that as the potential difference increases, so does the resistance. Now, although I keep pointing out that this is not the IV graph practical, it's a lot easier to explain if you do do a quick sketch of an IV graph. So as we can see, as the potential difference increases, the current also increases, but the rate of that increase starts to slow down. And that's because the resistance is increasing. So on this graph, the gradient is the reciprocal of resistance. So in other words, the steeper the gradient is, the lower the resistance is. So what I can see here is that the gradient of the graph gradually gets less steep, and that's because the resistance is increasing. Now the question said explain, and explain needs to trigger the word why in your head. Why is this happening? Well, the answer is that as we increase potential difference, that will increase current. If we give the electrons more energy, they move more quickly. But in doing so, that also increases the temperature. You know that from learning about the national grid and the idea that if those electrons were moving really, really quickly, there would be all that heat loss. So because the temperature increases, the metal ions vibrate more vigorously and that opposes the movement of the electrons. And that's what we mean by resistance. If we go back to the original slides so that you can see the full rubric, there is quite a lot that you need to do here in order to get six marks. Remember, for a level three answer, you need to have covered all aspects of the question, which here involves three separate things in the method, plus explaining the results, which is also going to require you to describe them. So in order to have covered all this, we need to have said something about how we can use the equipment. Now, that's a bit of an ambiguous statement, and it's possible that they just mean what you're going to measure it with. But then they have also included the measurements made. So you definitely need to have included in there that the voltmeter is for measuring potential difference and the ammeter is for measuring current. Then how to determine resistance. That means that you need to have included that calculation in there somewhere. And then, as we've said, you can't really explain the results without describing them. So you're going to need to have included this line about potential difference increasing and resistance increasing in there. And it needs to be resistance, not current, because otherwise we're not answering the question we've actually been asked. And then we need to make that link between potential difference and current and current and temperature. So if you did manage to get six marks, well done. This was a tough question. Here's a sneak preview of tomorrow's question, which covers another one of the biology required practicals from biology paper two. Don't forget, you can find a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also a playlist containing all of the videos so far in case you've missed any and need to catch up. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you back tomorrow for day 34 of my AQA GCSE Science six mark challenge. If you have found this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE Science revision videos coming soon.